Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail, I suppose, uh, how to generate a moving average uh, using Microsoft Excel's uh, data analysis tool pack. Okay, this is straightforward. Uh, it's like our previous videos using the data analysis tool pack. Uh, we're going to call a specific function and it's going to generate a, a moving average or a time moving average time series for us. So just the data that we're going to use. Okay, I have two columns. Okay, I have two variables. The first variable representing time, zero means meaning time zero or now, one meaning that one unit has elapsed, or let's say one day has elapsed, two indicating day, two days has elapsed, three days has elapsed, and so on and so forth. And then for each time unit, what we have is we have a, I suppose we have a, a, particular, a particular data value uh, that we recorded at, at, at that particular time unit. So 42 was recorded at time zero, 46 was recorded at time one, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, what we'd like to do is we'd like to do a two-day moving average, okay? That's where we have a window of width two units, okay? So in this case here, what we'd like the two-day moving average to represent the average of these two values. The next day's moving average will be the average of these windows, uh, these two values. The next day will be the average of these two values, and so on and so forth. But this is straightforward to actually calculate in Excel using the data analysis tool pack. And there's a function that allows us to calculate moving averages. So what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to go to the data ribbon. Okay, the data ribbon is just up here. Okay, uh, actually let me just turn on. Okay, let me just turn on a function here, my mouse locator, so that you can actually see this. Okay, so hopefully my mouse locator will come up here. There we go. I'm just going to activate it. And now my mouse locator is activated. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the data ribbon, which is found up here. I'm going to click on the data ribbon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose data analysis. So when I choose data analysis, we get this pop-up window. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down through it until I find moving average. Here's moving average here. I'm going to choose moving average. And I'm going to hit OK. Okay. So once the moving average uh, window pops up, okay, it requires uh, some for us to specify some some uh, particular ranges of values. Okay, uh, the first field here is the input range. So what I'm going to select is I'm going to select uh, all the values in this particular input range here. Okay, uh, so I've just selected all the values. Uh, I'm going to tell it where to produce the output. Okay, so I'm just going to say put the output under the two day option. Okay, and I'm going to tell it the width of the interval. Okay, the window, this moving window, this moving average should take into consideration when it's calculating the averages, it should average how many values. Okay, and in our case here, I'm going to do a two day moving average, so I'm going to put two into this particular field. Actually, that's all we have to do. Okay, we hit OK. And what we get is we get a series of values that look something like this. Okay. So this 44 here represents the average of 46 and 42. This 50.5 represents the average of 55 and 46. Uh, this 62 is the average of 69 and 55. Okay? What's important here is this, just to keep in mind, is that the moving average on any particular moment in time okay, is equal to the average of the data value at that moment in time and the previous value, that's for our two-day moving average. Okay? You can see that we have NA here, because there's no value before 42, we don't get a specific value coming through here. Okay? Just maybe just a sanity check this, uh, to show that these values are actually the averages of our previous values. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to call the function average. I'm going to say this is equal to average. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to average the two previous values. Okay. So there's our function there. You can actually see that 44, which is what we got in the two-day moving average, is the average of 46 and 42. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it down so that we apply the average function down this particular column. And hopefully what you can see is that we get similar values all the way down this particular column. This was using the actual Excel function called average and us defining the actual window width for that particular, for that particular calculation. Okay, so say if I want to do a three-day moving average, okay? Well, for a three-day moving average, I won't have an average here because I don't have three values uh, uh, previous to this, okay? I won't have an average here because all I have is two values, okay? Uh, but I will be able to calculate my first average at time 
time t is equal to 2, which will be the average of 55, 46, and 42, okay? And for the three-day moving average, this window is what actually moves ahead. So for time period 3, the average would be the average of 69, 55, and 46, okay? So let's use the Excel data analysis tool pack to calculate a three-day moving average. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose data analysis, moving average. Well, we've already selected that previously, so it's still activated. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, the, the, the input range, well, let's just click on this. It is the range that I've already highlighted previously, but this time my interval I need to be of interval width 3. The window is of width 3. Uh, and the output range, well, the output range is going to be just under the three-day three uh, label, okay? So I'm going to hit OK, and actually what we can actually see here now is as we, as we, 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 I suppose, we thought was going to happen, we don't get a moving average for the first time period, nor the second, but we do for the third, and this value here is the average of these three values, okay? To do a five-day moving average, we do the exact same thing, go to the data analysis tool pack, uh, select moving average, hit OK, this time my time period is going to be five, Sorry, my window is going to be up with five, and my output range. Let me put it under the label, label five day. Okay, and I hit OK here. Okay, and actually, what you can see is we get our moving average, our five day moving average along here. What's important is that on the fifth time interval, which is time interval four, we have our moving average, which is the average of the previous the previous five. Okay. So guys, I hope that uh, was that this short video, uh, I suppose, helped to demystify the way the moving average function works uh, within the data analysis tool pack. And once again, guys, uh, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I suppose, thanks for your time.